Uh, good evening. Welcome to Ted Ellis Field, home of the Chapmanville Tigers for Chapmanville Tigers Baseball on Video Productions and WVOW. Tonight, the Chapmanville Tigers looking to continue the winning ways. They snapped a five-game losing streak Saturday with a 5-3 win over the uh, over Point Pleasant. Looking to continue that and build some momentum heading into the postseason play, which is just under a month away. Tonight, the Tigers take on the reigning Class AA state champion, number one ranked Winfield Generals, who come into the contest 15 and 0. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Lusk with you on video productions and WVOW. Our studio engineer back in the WVOW studios is uh, Seth Estep. Robbie Mounts will be our video or will be our producer, on-site producer here for video productions, and our camera guy up on top of the scoreboard here at Ted Ellis Field is Benji Cox as we get set for high school baseball between the Tigers and the Generals. Again, you mentioned that Chapmanville ended a five-game losing streak. The Tigers started the season 0-5 before they won three straight. That was followed by a five-game losing streak that ended Saturday with a 5-3 win at Point Pleasant. On the other side of Winfield Generals, well, they've been perfect this season. Reigning Class AA champions are 15-0. And they've got some very impressive victories on the schedule this season. To date, the Generals have defeated a pair of double A or a pair of triple A ranked teams, excuse me, number three Cabell Midland, number six Ripley. They also own wins over double A number six Sissonville and number eight Scott. And last week they defeated now number two Charleston Catholic, but at that time the Irish came into the game ranked number one in class single A. Winfield has won 20 straight games entering tonight's game and have won 30 of their last 31 games dating back to last season. The last time the Generals tasted defeat was in game one of the Class AA Region 4 Championship Series on May 22nd, dropping a 2-1 decision in game one of the Region 4 Finals at Logan. They rebounded to win the next two and then defeat Wahama in a tune-up game before going on and winning two games in the state tournament to win the Class AA state tournament for Chapmanville to pull off this win tonight and get momentum going into the rest of their season they've got to score some runs tonight I know it kind of sounds like a captain obvious thing to say but when you look at this Winfield you look at this this Winfield this it, this resume that the generals have built this is a strong pitching staff that has seven shutouts on the year and they've only allowed two runs or fewer in 13 of those 15 games. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to step aside for a quick break, uh, two-minute timeout here, and when we come back, we'll get set for starting lineups and first pitch from Ted Ellis Field in Tampville, West Virginia. You're watching and listening to Tampville Tigers Baseball on Video Productions and WBOW, Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station.
Welcome back to Ted Ellis Field, and uh, apologize for the brief delay, but uh, you know, lineups, the lineups and lineups and teams have been introduced, and we're getting ready for playing in the national anthem. So we're going to throw it back to the station for another two-minute break. When we come back, we will have first pitch between Winfield and Chapmanville on Video Productions and WVOW Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Tiger Baseball and Video Productions and WVOW Tigers and Generals just about set for baseball action here from Ted Ellis Field in beautiful Chapmanville, West Virginia. A hot tax day, April 15th. Hope you got your taxes filed in time and avoid any penalties out there as it is a beautiful day for baseball. Temperatures near 80 degrees here this afternoon as we're just about set for first pitch and Chapmanville starting pitcher tonight is Ian Plumley, and he will face a lineup, the number one ranked generals. That looks like this. Leading off the pitcher, Carson Fry for Winfield. Left fielder, Preston Kiefer bats second. Blake Withrow, the first baseman, hits third. Xavier Hensley, the third baseman, bats cleanup. In the number five spot is the right fielder, Jared Miller. Jake Kimball is the designated hitter. He bats sixth. He'll be batting for the center fielder, Brody Cox. Bryson Downey is the catcher and will hit seven. Owen Taylor plays short and bats eight. And batting nine, second baseman Ian Cox. As we're Chapmanville has finished their – Plumley's finished his warm-up tosses. Chapmanville getting one last throw around the diamond as we are set for baseball here. As stepping in for the Generals, Carson Fry, the left-handed hitting pitcher tonight for the Generals, and we'll set the defense for Chapmanville after the first pitch. There it comes, and it's upstairs for a ball, 1-0 and oh the count to Carson Fry. In the outfield for the Tigers, Gunnar Lucas is in left field, Joey Canterbury in center, A.J. Motto in right as the 1-0 is low, 2-0 and oh now the count to Fry. On the diamond for the Tigers, Corey Johnson at at third base, shortstop Andrew Topping. The 2-0 pitch is on its way, and it swung on and hit high into right field, and it's over the head of the right fielder, and, in fact, it is over the fence. A solo home run on the third pitch of the game for Carson Fry, and the Generals strike first, 3 nothing, or, excuse me, one nothing on a solo home run off the bat of Fry. As that ball just did get over the right field fence, as you see it, on our replay here, 
As the right fielder for Chapmanville, A.J. Motto, went back, saw that the ball was over his head and was going to have thoughts of playing it off the wall, but that one carried on out of here. So three pitches into the game, Winfield with a 1-0 lead on the fry solo home run. Now the batter, left fielder Preston Kiefer. And pitch upstairs for a ball, 1-0 the count to Kiefer. The rest of the Tigers' defense, we left off shortstop Andrew Topping. Second baseman is Nate Easterling. First baseman, Andrew Farley. Talon Thompson behind the plate for Plumley as the 1-0 is in there. Four called strike, 1-1 one, one the count. To Kiefer, Blake Withrow, the first baseman in the on-deck circle. And that pitch inside for a ball, 2-1 the count as Kiefer tried to stick the elbow out there and draw a hit by pitch, but that ball not as – that ball didn't come anywhere close to hitting. Now the 2-1 will be lined in to left field for a single out, thinking about two, and Kiefer will slide in safely as that ball kind of got caught up out there. Gunnar Lucas, the left fielder, got to it as quick as he could, but – that ball just died out there, and Kiefer rounding first, heading into second with a sliding double. Now Blake Withrow, the batter for the Generals, left-handed hitting first baseman with the runner in scoring position. Plumley check of the runner, pitch on the way outside for a ball, 1-0 the count. Didn't miss by much on that outside corner. As Thompson did everything he could to try to frame the pitch but to no avail, home plate umpire. Wasn't giving the call there, so 1-0 the count. And the pitch into dirt, good block by Thompson, prevent Kiefer from advancing. He'll have to hold at second, and 2-0 the count to Withrow. Plumley back on the rubber now, going through the signs. He has the sign he wants, the 2-0 delivery on the way. Taken low, 3-0 now the count, and we'll see if Withrow is, we'll see if Withrow is taking all the way or if he has the green light on the 3-0 delivery from Plumley. Here it comes, and breaking for third, and they've got him gunned, and they do apply the tag as Kiefer slid in safely at first, but he overslid the bag, and Corey Johnson was right there to apply the tag. 2-5 on the caught, stealing one away in the, well, then we're going to get a conversation. I'm pretty sure the umpire caught, caught him out, but Kiefer standing on the bag. Now in conversation, and out is the call. So 2-5 on the put out, caught stealing as Thompson is able to gun down Kiefer, trying to steal third base. So one away and a 3-1 count to Withrow. Three one on the way, swung on the miss. Three two now the count to Blake with throw. It's Plumley back on the mound, working quickly from the windup. Three two pitch on the way, swung on foul out of play. Count remains three two. As Thompson gets a new baseball back to Plumley. Again, working quickly, and the three twos outside for a ball. That's the first base on balls issued by Plumley, and Xavier Hensley, the first baseman, will step to the plate for the Winfield Generals. First pitch on the way in the dirt for a ball. One zero oh, the count to Xavier Hensley, the fourth batter in the Winfield lineup. one nothing Generals lead here in the top of the first, runner at first base. With throw, he'll have to hold it first as Hensley fouls a pitch off. One and one to count now as that one got a little bit of Talon Thompson behind the plate. And Coach Rakes will come out and check on his, check on his catcher as 
and look to see if Thompson's going to remain in the game or Rakes is going to go to another catcher. It looks like Thompson's okay now as he tells Rakes he's fine. And Plumley tossing the ball around with his infield. And now he'll come in and have a talk with with Thompson. If you're just joining us, one nothing Winfield on the solo home run. McCarson Fry, third pitch of the game, just over the right field fence. Kiefer followed with the double, was caught stealing, trying to steal third for the first out. Then Blake Withrow drew a walk on a full count. And now 1 1. Hensley back in the box as we're ready to play as Thompson. It's okay back in his crouch behind the plate. 1-1-1 one, one, one out, pitch on the way outside, 2-1 and one. now the count. To Xavier Hensley. Pitch to Plumley. runner breaks for second. The throw down is not in time. As sliding in head first, head first in the second base with a steal is with throw as the 2-1 was upstairs, 3-1 now the count to Hensley. As you see the generals trying to apply a little pressure on Chapmanville early on in this, in this contest. 3-1 pitch on the way, swung on, popped up in the center field. Joey Canterbury, the center fielder, Camps makes the catch and will get it back in and holding it second is with throw. That's two away here in the top of the first inning and a batter, Jared Miller, the right fielder. And right Nineteen pitches thus far in the first inning for Plumley. As he looks to get out of it here and retire Miller and limit the damage to one run in the top of the first. That pitch fouled off the chest protector of Thompson into the screen. 0-1 to count. Plumley check a wit throw at second and the pitch. Beautiful pitch curveball that started inside and broke back over the part of the plate. Nothing to the count as that froze Miller. So now Plumley one strike away from getting out of the top of the first inning. Pitch on the way is a wild pitch as it bounces in front of Thompson and gets to the screen and it will be caught up behind the backstop. So advancing the third will be with throw. As home plate umpire and Thompson look to see if the ball can be retrieved. And instead he'll give Thompson a new baseball to get to give to Plumley. So one, two, two outs here in the top of the first inning. So Withrow moves up to third on the wild pitch. Two strike pitch coming and it's swung on, hit in the left field. This ball's trouble, it's hit into the gap and it's going to bounce and hit out there in the gap and moving into second base with a double is Miller is coming in scoring on the play is with throw and Winfield has a two nothing lead on the RBI double by Jared Miller and that'll bring up Jake Kimball, the designated hitter to the plate. As the right-hand hitting designated hitter steps into the box for the Generals. Pitch on the way, swung on, and hit between short and third for a base hit. Charging it is the left fielder. He'll not have a play as Lucas will have to hold it. Coming in to score from second base is Jared Miller. And on the RBI single, Winfield. Extends to a 3 nothing lead here early in the top of the first. 
as Bryson Downing will be the batter for the Generals. Downing, right-hand hitting catcher. Kimball the runner at first, pitch on the way, swung on and chopped the third. There's Johnson, he'll field and throw across the diamond to Farley at first base to retire the Generals in the top of the first inning, but Winfield plates three runs on three hits. They leave one stranded, actually, excuse me, three runs on four hits and one runner stranded in the top of the first inning. Winfield three, Chapmanville coming to the bat. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers Baseball and Video Productions and WVOW Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Welcome back, Ted Ellsfield, champion West Virginia. We move to the bottom of the first inning here on Video Productions and WVOW 3-0. Winfield with the early lead, and Chapmanville coming to the plate against Carson Fry, and the Tigers lineup looks like this. Leading off the shortstop, Andrew Topping. Gunner Lucas, left fielder, will bat second. Batting third to catcher, Talon Thompson. First baseman, Andrew Farley will occupy the cleanup spot and bat fourth today. Batting fifth, center fielder Joey Canterbury. Third baseman, Corey Johnson, hits sixth. Ian Plumley, the pitcher for Chapmanville, will bat seventh. A.J. Motto, the right fielder, hits eighth. And Nate Easterling, the second baseman for the Tigers, bats ninth. Defensively for the Generals, in the outfield from left to right, in left field, Preston Keeper, center fielder Brody Cox. The right fielder is Jared Miller on the time. And at third base is Xavier Hensley, shortstop Owen Taylor at second base. Ian Cox, first baseman Blake Withrow. And behind the plate, Bryson Downing for the pitcher. Carson Fry. As Fry on the mound looking for his first pitch upstairs for a ball to... Andrew Topping, Topping in the leadoff spot for the Tigers this afternoon. Chapmanville looking to get on the scoreboard here in the top of the first, trying to answer that three spot that the Generals put on the board as the 1-0 is outside 2-0 now the count. 2-0 pitch on the way, swung on the miss by Topping, 2-1. Two and one now the count. Gunner Lucas in the on-deck circle for the Tigers. 2-1 pitch is taken for a strike, and that'll even the count at two balls, two strikes. Again, Chapmanville coming off a 5-3 win over Point Pleasant Saturday. Looking ahead, Winfield their first loss here. This evening, as Fry's 2-2 is in the dirt, gets away from the catcher. 3-2 the count now to Andrew Topping. Full count pitch coming. Here it comes, and it's inside, nearly hits him, and that'll be a base on ball as the Tigers have the leadoff batter aboard to start the top of the first inning. And the batter now, Gunner Lucas. Lucas the batter. Now 
Topping the runner at first, gets his lead. Lucas will take the first offering upstairs for a ball, 1-0 the count. To Lucas. Pitch on the way outside, 2-0 now the count. To Gunner Lucas. Fries 2 0 on the way. Swung on. Hit down the right field line. It's going to get down for a hit as the right fielder trying to make a diving catch. He comes up empty. It's going to get by. And the Tigers are going to have runners at second and third after the double off the bat of Gunner Lucas. Now Talon Thompson, the batter. And Thompson in that win over Point Pleasant had a two run home run in the top of the first inning. For the Chapmanville Tigers that got them going. And Thompson, if he can come up with home run number two here, he could even the score at three. As the Tigers, runners at second and third, tying run at the plate. Pitch on the way, and it swung on. Hit on the line in the center field. There to make the catch is the center fielder. Runner tags at third, coming into the plate. Not going to be in time as the pitcher cut the throw. And... He went to flip it to the catcher and flipped it to the backstop. So a sack fly off the bat of Talon Thompson gets the Tigers on the board. It's 3-1 to one Winfield on the play. Gunnar Lucas was halfway off the bag at second base. And by the time he got back to the bag, he was unaware that the ball had gotten to the backstop and is unable to advance to third base. But the Tigers do get a run in. Andrew Farley now the batter. As Thompson hit a hard line drive in the center field, the center fielder Brody Cox unleashed a strike to the plate that was unfortunately cut off by the pitcher. Otherwise, it had been a close plate to plate. It would be interesting to see if Fry lets that ball go, if they would have had a play on topping who scored on the play. First pitch to Farley is a strike on the inside corner. Second one upstairs, one and one the count. So Chapmanville gets one run back. They trail 3-1. And with the runner in scoring position at second base, Farley swings and misses, and then the ball pops in and out of the mitt of the catcher, Brayson Downing, and moving to third base on the pass ball is Gunnar Lucas. So runner in scoring position, 90 feet away, third base for the Tigers. As Farley down in the count, 1-2. One-two pitch on the way. Farley swings and fouls it. This count remains. One ball, two strikes. As we are live from Ted Ellis Field in Chapmanville, West Virginia, on a beautiful Monday evening. Pitch on the way. We'll catch Farley looking. There's first strikeout. Of the game for either pitcher. And now the two out batter, Joey Canterbury. Canterbury has some pop in his bat as well. He had a home run in Chapmanville's trip to Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. Canterbury takes a pitch outside for a ball, 1 0 the counts. Canterbury and Thompson, along with Bo Thompson and Cam DeRace each with a home run, and that's the only four home runs in Logan County this season. The ball hit the first, and the first baseman came over to cover, and it gets by him, and the second baseman is able to get to it, but late to the bag is Fry on the play, and that's going to be an infield single for Joey Canterbury and bring in Gunnar Lucas and cut the deficit to 3-2 as the Tigers have played the two runs here in the bottom of the first inning. And Corey Johnson will be the batter for the for the Tigers after the infield single off the bat of Joey Canterbury and first pitch to Johnson upstairs for a ball. 1-0 the count to Corey Johnson with the pitcher Ian Plumley 
in the on deck circle for Chapmanville. Canterbury with his lead at first. Fry's pitch. Cut on a miss by Johnson, and the count evens up at one ball, one strike. One one two outs here, bottom of the second inning. Pitch on the way. Runner breaks for second, and it swung on and fouled out of play. And Canterbury will have to retreat back to first base as the count now runs to one ball, two strikes. Johnson back in the box. Fry with new baseball check of the runner. Canterbury at first. The one-two pitch on the way is taken inside corner for a called strike three. And that will end the inning for Chapmanville. But not for the Tigers. Plate two runs on two hits. They leave a runner stranded. One inning in the books from Ted Ellis Field. Winfield three, Chapmanville two. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers Baseball on Video Productions and WVOW. Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Move to the top of the second inning here from Ted Ellis Field. Townville Tigers baseball and video productions and WVOW. 3-2 Winfield with the lead as leading all four of the generals will be Owen Taylor. He'll be followed by Ian Cox and Carson Fry. 8-9-1 in the generals lineup. And first pitch is outside for a ball. 1-0 the count to the shortstop, Owen Taylor. Hitting for the first time this evening as next pitch swung on and hit the third. And fielding it is the third baseman, Corey Johnson. And his throw will get over the head of the first baseman, Andrew Farley, and moving up to moving up into scoring position at second base on the air is Taylor. So Ian Cox, the batter. And we'll see if Cox is up here, number nine hitter. We'll see if he's up to bunt as Chavonville has the corner infield playing up on the grass. Well, third baseman Johnson is at the edge of the grass. No sign of a bunt just yet. First pitch taken for a ball. 1-0 the count. Johnson was able to field that grounder, but he hurried to throw a little. And it got over the head and off the fence there, and that was far enough for Taylor to scoot in to second base to advance on the throwing error as Cox now had an account 2-0. Looking to drive in a run here from the nine spot. Pitch on the way, swung on, popped up on the infield. It'll stay in fair territory. Farley will call everybody off and make the play. Out behind the bag at first base, so one away 
And the batter is Carson Fry. Fry one for one. Solo home run on third pitch of the game to get the scoring started for the Generals. And he steps into the box for his second plate appearance. Fry in the box, pitch from Plumley. And is inside, and Champville asked for an appeal on the check swing. And Fry was able to hold his swing, so 1 0 the count to Fry. Pitch on the way, swung on, hit in the right field. Right fielder is back on it, back at the wall, reaches out, and is able to come up with the catch as he crashes in to the right field fence. That's Motto. And tagging at the second base and moving to third is Owen Taylor as A.J. Motto makes a fantastic running grab, as you see it here on our replay here on Video Productions, as Motto's able to reach out, backhand that one before he crashes into the fence and is able to get it back in to hold Taylor at third base. Taylor tagged up on the play as Winfield with a runner 90 feet away in scoring position for Preston Kiefer, who doubled in the first inning. Kiefer with a hustle double. He takes a pitch outside that double. Kind of got caught up in the grass there. Now here's a shot to third, fielded by the third baseman, Johnson. Over to first, Farley digs it out of the dirt, and that'll retire the side in the top of the second inning for the Generals. They get no runs, no hits. They leave a runner stranded. One and a half in the books from Ted Ellis Field in Chapmanville, West Virginia. Winfield three, Chapmanville two. You're watching and you're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers baseball and video productions and WVOW Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Bottom of the second inning from Ted Ellis Field as the Tigers trail the Generals 3-2 as they bat in the home half of the second inning. Bill Lusk with you on video productions and WVOW as the batter for the Tigers. Ian Plumley 7-8-9 due up for the Tigers as Plumley swings at the 1-0. Comes up empty, 1-1 the count. Plumley, A.J. Motto, Nate Easterling. The batters due up for the Tigers, who trail by a run as that pitch is outside, 2-1 the count. Our studio engineer back in the WVOW studios, Seth Estep, our engineer tonight for the broadcast here for video productions, Robbie Mounts, and our cameraman atop the press box is Benji Cox as the 2-1 is behind Plumley 3-1 now the count to Ian Plumley. As the Tigers were able to keep Winfield off the board in the top of the second inning. And they come to bat looking to even the score, possibly take the lead. As that pitch 
is taken for a called strike on the outside part of the plate. 3-2 now the count. To Plumley. Plumley looks in, now waits the delivery from Fry. Here it comes, and he'll swing and foul it out of play. This count remains full, three balls, two strikes. Also in action tonight, Logan hosting Scott in a makeup game from Friday evening. 3-2 pitch swung on, popped up, out into right field. This could be trouble. Right fielder in the second baseman again, too, and it's going to be the right fielder, Jared Miller, making the catch. One step away from the foul line and one away after the flyout in the flyout to right field. A.J. Motto, the batter. If we get a score update from Roger E. Gertzfield, we'll pass it along during the broadcast as A.J. Motto, the batter. Motto takes a pitch on the outside corner for a called strike. Nothing and one to count. 0-1 pitch from Fry to Motto upstairs for a ball. 1-1 to count. Chapmanville will travel to Scott tomorrow evening. In a crucial battle that will go a long way in determining sectional seating as Motto swings and misses. One and two now the count to Motto. There's one two pitch on the way outside. Two two the count. Chapmanville has played. Just one game against sectional competition, and that was last week, a loss to Logan. Logan, likewise, their only sectional competition play was against Chapmanville last week. As that pitch inside, count runs full, 3-2 to Motto. Miss Fry tried to paint the inside corner, but just missed. 0-2 pitch, or 3-2 pitch, upstairs, and Motto will go down swinging. That's strikeout number three for Carson Fry. And out number two for the Tigers. And now Nate Easterling, the batter for Chapmanville. Easterling steps into the box. Waiting Fry's first pitch. Number nine hitter in the Chapmanville lineup. On deck, the leadoff hitter, Andrew Topping, in the on deck circle. As first pitch swung on a miss by Easterling, nothing and one to count. As Fry started him with an off-speed pitch. 0-1 on the way, and Easterling swing and miss, nothing and two. Now the count. As Fry is one pitch away from a rather quick second inning. As the pitch is upstairs, one and two the count. As update from Roger E. Gertz Field, top of the second inning, Wildcats two, Skyhawks one. As the one-two pitch, a swung on a miss upstairs, goes Fry to retire Easterling and the Tigers in the bottom half of the second inning. Chapmanville goes down in order as we've completed two innings from Ted Ellis Field. Winfield three, Chapmanville two. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers Baseball on Video Productions and WVOW, Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station.
Top of the third inning from Ted Ellis Field, Chapman, West Virginia, 3-2. Winfield leading the Chapmanville Tigers. And the Generals will send Blake Withrow, Xavier Hensley, Jared Miller, 3-4-5 in the lineup as first pitch lined hard at the first baseman, Andrew Farley. He's able to knock it down and take it to the bag for out number one here in the top of the third. So three unassisted if you're scoring at home as get a replay on our video productions. Uh, video productions replay here as that ball was smoked, but on our little general replay, you see that Farley is able to knock it down and keep it in front of him and beat with throw to the bag as Hensley steps into the box, takes pitch for a ball, 1 0 the count to Xavier Hensley. Hensley 0 for 1, flew out to center field back in the first inning. You just joining us on Video Productions or WVOW. All the scoring happened in first inning. Generals played in three runs in the top of the first inning. Chapville answered with two. Since then, it's been zeros as Hensley now ahead in the count. Two and one, the count to Hensley. So I apologize for missing the pitch there. Two one on the way. Swung on a miss. Two two now the count to Hensley as Winfield got three runs on four hits in the top of the first inning. Chapmanville, two runs, two hits in the bottom of the first. That's where we currently stand, 3-2 Winfield, as 2-2 pitch is outside. 3-2 and two now the count. To Hensley, and 3-2 pitch on the way will be inside for ball four. That is the second walk issued by Ian Plumley and the right fielder, Jared Miller, the batter. Miller had an RBI double and a run scored back in the first. Plumley working from the stretch. First pitch upstairs to Miller, 1 0 the count. As looks like there's action down in the Chapmanville bullpen. Can't uh, make out the reliever just yet. Plumley pitch on the way. Taken outside for a strike. 1-1 one, one the count. That was pitch number 43 from Plumley. Pitch on the way. Runner breaks and the swing and fouled out of play. And the runner at first, Hensley, will have to retreat back to first base. It's one, two, the count to Miller. Pitch on the way upstairs, two, two, the count. As the Hillbillies were, man, high school Hillbillies off tonight. They're in action tomorrow against Lincoln County as throw over nothing doing as Hensley is back in standing at first base. 2-2-1 two, two, out, pitch on the way inside and high for a ball. 3-2 the count. And even though Mam wasn't in action tonight, there's still – you know, news down in Mam West Virginia as their new performance center, their their batting cage was dedicated in honor of James Buzz Cook for those as throw over nothing doing. For those that are not familiar with the name Buzz Cook, that is the former agent of Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame quarterback Brent Favre. As Plumley Steps off the rubber and will go through the signs with Talon Thompson. And you haven't been following high school baseball this season. Uh, new development as a pitch on the way is swung on a miss. That's the first strikeout for Plumley, and that's the second out here in the top of the third inning for the Chapmanville Tigers. So two away, and Jake Kimball, the batter, the designated hitter who had an RBI single that scored Miller back in the top of the first. 
Pitch on the way, and that pitch swung on, hit in to left field. High towering fly ball, but right there is the left fielder, Gunnar Lucas, to make the catch and retire the Generals in the top of the third inning. Winfield gets a one out walk, but leaves a runner stranded. So we played two and a half from Ted Ellis Field, Winfield three, Chapmanville two. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers Baseball on WVOW on Video Productions and WVOW, Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. And welcome back, to Ted El welcome back to Ted Ellis Field. We head to the bottom of the third inning, and the Tigers trailing the Winfield Generals 3-2 as they will send the top of the lineup to bat here in the third. Andrew Topping, Gunnar Lucas, and Talon Thompson do up for the Tigers. First pitch to Topping is a strike on the outside corner, nothing and one to count. And quickly, Fry with the 0-1. Upstairs, the count evens up at one ball, one strike. Topping in his only at bat back in the first inning, walked and scored on the Talon Thompson sacrifice fly as that pitch is over the heart of the plate, one and two. Now the count to Topping. One two pitch on the way, nearly hits him as Topping ducks out of the way. 2-2 two, two, now the count. Two two pitch on the way. And swing at a slow roller hit to second. Good play out there by the second baseman, Ian Cox, or I shouldn't say a you know slow roller, kind of a tricky one off the bat as you look at it on our little general replay. Looks like it's off the end of the bat, a little bit of a cue ball shot. And hits the grass and takes a little tricky hop, but Cox played that well and is able to get it to withthrow for out number one. And now Gunnar Lucas, the batter, Lucas doubled back in the back in the first inning on a little looping line drive out to right field. Jared Miller tried to make a diving catch out there, and ball was able to get by as the 1-0 pitch is upstairs for a ball 2-0. Now the count. And that allowed Lucas to cruise into second base with a double in his first plate appearance. He came around to score on the RBI single off the bat of Joey Canterbury. And the 2-0 was cut on and missed. And it looked like his elbow guard come flying off there. So 2-1 pitch, outside and low, 3-1 now to count to Gunnar Lucas with Talon Thompson. In the on-deck circle for the Tigers. One away here, 3-1 count. 3-2 Winfield leads and pitch swung on the foul out of play. 3-2 and two the count will run full. Three-two pitch. 
Coming in, it's inside for a ball. And Lucas is aboard for the second time this evening. And that is the second walk issued by Carson Fry, Talon Thompson, the batter. Thompson, back in the first inning, had a sack fly out to right field. A line drive, sacrifice fly. That was caught by the center fielder, Brody Cox. That's Thompson looking for the offering, and it's taken inside for a strike. Nothing and one to count as Thompson was backing, backing away from that pitch, but it caught just enough at the corner to draw a strike call from the home plate umpire. Lucas, the runner at first, lead pitch in the dirt, one and one the count, and good block by the catcher, Downing to prevent Lucas from getting in the scoring position. 1-1 one, one on the way. Thompson takes outside 2-1 now the count. As Carson Fry just delivered pitch number 52. 52 pitches in two and a third innings pitched thus far. And a 2-1 on the way, swung on and fouled out of place. The count will even up at two balls, two strikes. To the right-hand hitting catcher for the Tigers, Talon Thompson. As Thompson steps back in the box, Fry with a new baseball on the rubber. Check of the runner at first, that's Lucas. And a 2-2 pitch forthcoming, and it swung on and hit on a line in the center field. We'll see if it gets over center fielder's head. What a job by Brody Cox out there to track that ball down and retire Talon Thompson for the second time this evening. As you look at it on our Thornhill Auto Group replay on video productions, Cox was playing in, froze for a moment, then broke back on the baseball and reached up to make the catch. And Andrew Farley will be the two-out hitter for the Tigers. Farley 0 for 1, strikeout looking in the first. Takes a pitch outside for a ball, 1-0 and 0 the count to Farley. Must be real, you know, real curious to see exit velocity on that. Ball as that pitch nearly hits Farley as he gets out of the way of it. Two and oh, the count. You you know, you hear about exit velocity in Major League Baseball a lot. Be interesting to know how quick that ball came off the bat of Talon Thompson. Farley in the box. Two oh, swung on a miss. Two and one, the count. To Farley, two outs here in the bottom of the third. 3-2, Winfield leading Logan. 2-1 pitch on the way. Cut on the miss, 2-2. Two two. Now the count evens up. As we'll see if Chapmanville elects to start the runner. That is Lucas at first base. 2-2-2 two, two, two out. Deuces wild here. In the third, Lucas does break, and pitch is swung on and missed. That'll be strike three as Fry has his fifth strikeout, and that will retire the Tigers in the bottom of the third inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base for Chapmanville. Three innings in the books from Ted Ellis Field. Winfield three, Chapmanville two. You're watching and listening to Townville Tigers baseball on video productions and WVOW, Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station.
Moved to the top of the fourth inning, 3-2 Winfield leading Chapmanville here. High School Baseball on Video Productions and WVOW from Ted Ellis Field in Chapmanville, West Virginia. The batter for the Winfield Generals, Brayson Downing. The catcher over one with a ground out to third base. Now a high fly ball into the left center field gap, and it's going to elude Joey Canterbury and get to the wall. Downing thinking of three. Here comes the throw, the tag, in plenty of time. And that will be an 8-6-5 put out as Canterbury is able to get it to the shortstop, Andrew Topping, who fires to Corey Johnson, who applies the tag on Downing for out number one. So a double and 8-6-5 put out as you'll see it right here on video productions here on the replay, replay brought to you by Little General Stores as the pitch to Owen Taylor taking first strike, nothing and one the count. So one away here in the top of the fourth. Taylor reached on an error back in the back in the second inning. Swings at the 0-1 and lines it in the center field. But right there's Canterbury to track it down for out number two. And Ian Cox, the batter, he flew out to the first baseman Andrew Farley in the second inning as the Tigers Ian Plumley on for his fourth inning of work and pitch inside just misses one and oh the count as Plumley looking to retire the generals here as that pitch outside corner just low two oh now the count two cops two good pitches there by Plumley just missed. So instead of 0-2, it's 2-0. That one inside, 3-0 the count. To the number nine hitter in the Winfield general lineup. 3-0, two outs, pitch on the way. Is inside, ball four, and Cox hustling down to first base as the ball gets off the mid of Thompson into the backstop. And Cox gets to first base. Thompson gets to it quickly and will hold him there. As the batter's Carson Fry, Fry has is one for two this evening. The solo home run on the th again on the third pitch of the game to give Winfield a one nothing lead, and his last plate appearance gave a gave the ball a ride to right field. Uh, the right fielder for Chapmanville, AJ Motto was able to track it down and make a backhanding catch before crashing into the right field fence out there. And Chapmanville will talk about how they want to handle this at bat here in the top of the fourth with two outs here to Fry. As you're just joining us, let's recap the scoring again. Fry started it with a solo home run back in the first inning to give the Generals a one nothing lead. Jared Miller had an RBI double that scored Blake Withrow to make it 2 nothing. Chapmanville and Jake Kimball rounded out the three-run first inning with an RBI single that played at Miller, giving Winfield a 3 nothing lead after a half inning of play. Chapmanville responded with two runs in the bottom of the first inning. Talon Thompson with a sacrifice fly to score Andrew Topping with the first run of the game for the Tigers. Then Joey Canterbury. Had an RBI single to cut the deficit to 3-2. to two. That's where we currently stand here with two outs in the top of the fourth inning. Uh, meaning on the mound is concluded. Fry in the box. Pitch on the way. He's in the dirt. 1-0 oh, the count to Fry. As runner at first base, Ian Cox. I've got to imagine he's staying on the bag at first unless the ball gets by the catcher. If that was happening, you might see Chapmanville intentionally walk Fry as they are being very cautious with him right now. That pitch outside didn't miss by much. 2-0 and oh, the count. We'll try to see if they can't get Fry to chase a pitch and see if they can possibly get him to roll it over and end this inning. The 2-0 the -oh pitch swung on, popped up on the infield. Coming in to make the play is the shortstop, and it goes off his glove as 
Andrew Topping came in and it looked like he was camped under it and that ball just does go off his glove and that will be an error the second of the game as you'll see it on our little general replay. Topping calls everybody off, gets under it and right at the last second it just goes off his glove as Carson Fry moves into second base now. Moving up to third on the play is Ian Cox. So now the batter is Preston Kiefer, one for two, a double in the first, and a ground out to third back in the second. Pitch on the way, gets by the catcher. Here comes a runner from third, Cox, and he'll score as Winfield takes a 4-2 lead now. Moving up to third on the play is Carson Fry as the Generals on top. 4 2, and you see here on our Thornhill Auto Group replay. That one looked like kind of took a tricky hop, so we'll wait to get the official score there. That, as you've seen on our Thornhill Auto Group replay, Talon Thompson had the glove down that kind of took a you know, tricky hop before it got to him, and we'll see how it was scored by the Official scores keeper Ford Chapmanville when we have it. That ball's grounded to third. Knocked down over there, and the throw will be in time as Topping is able to knock it down and stay with it, and he fires a strike over to Andrew Farley at first for the final out in the top of the fourth inning. The Generals, they play one run on one hit. They leave a runner stranded. There was one Chapmanville error in the inning. Three and a half innings in the books from Chapmanville, West Virginia. Winfield four, Chapmanville two. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers baseball on video productions and WVOW Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Bottom of the fourth inning from Chapmanville, West Virginia, 4-2. Winfield leading Chapmanville as the Tigers send Joey Canterbury, Corey Johnson, and Ian Plumley to the plate. Five, six, seven hitters in the lineup. Canterbury awaiting the 1-1 pitch. First pitch was in for a strike. Second pitch was over the catcher's head and to the backstop, and that one is on the outside corner called strike one and two, the count as Carson Fry on working his fourth inning. That pitch outside, 2-2 two, two the count. That 1-1 one, one pitch apparently got enough of the plate to warrant a strike call. Now the 1-2 two outside, 2-2 two and two now the count. As the pitch on the way, nearly hits Canterbury as he spins out of the way of the pitch. 3-2 the count runs full. Fry's full count offering on the way, and it's outside, ball four. The Tigers have the leadoff batter aboard for just the second time this evening as Corey Johnson, the third baseman, steps to the plate for Fry. That is 
walk number three. He has five strikeouts on the evening, has allowed just two hits and two earned runs and three-plus innings of work on the mound. As his counterpart, Ian Plumley, is in the on-deck circle. Pitch to Johnson, swung on a miss. Pitch may have been up and out of the zone. Nothing and one to count to Johnson. As the general scored a run on a wild pitch back in the fourth inning to take a 4-2 lead as the 0-1 in the dirt. 1-1 one one now the count. So Ian Cox scoring on the wild pitch to give the generals a 4-2 lead in the bottom of the fourth. And pitch by Johnson swung on a miss. And a straight steal for Canterbury as he'll slide in without a throw. So Canterbury still second and is in scoring position for Johnson. And the Tigers looking to cut into the two-run deficit here in the bottom of the fourth. Pitch on the way. Swung on, fouled out of play. And it remains one ball, two strikes as Fry's pitch count now hits 69 pitches. This will be pitch number 70 coming up for the right-hander. Here it comes, and it's outside corner called strike three. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. If you're watching at home on video productions and you see this on the replay, as that pitch may be a generous strike call. But, you know, as a, as a former player and a former coach, you can't put yourself in the position if you're the batter to be up there. If it's close, you got to be hacking at it. Nevertheless, that's strikeout number six for Johnson. And that pitch is taken for a strike to Ian Plumley. Plumley 0 for 1 with a fly out to right back in the second inning. His only plate appearance thus far. 0 1 on the way. Upstairs, 1 and 1 the count. So again, we're up here in press box view from Ted Ellis Field. As the 1-1 offering swung on a miss by Plumley, one and two now the count. To Ian Plumley. As he was late on the fastball. We'll see if Fry sticks with the fastball or goes off speed here. One two pitch on the way. As a fastball outside. Good block by the catcher. Downing. As Plumley is able to check his swing, and the count evens up at two balls, two strikes. Bill Lusk with you from Ted Ellis Field on video productions and WVOWs. The 2 2 is upstairs. The count now runs full, three and two the count. Our studio engineer back in WVOW studio, Seth Estep. Our on-site engineer for video productions, Robbie Mounts, and our cameraman atop the press box is Benji Cox. As that pitch is swung on and missed by Plumley in the dirt, applying the tag is downing for out number two. Strikeout number seven for Carson Fry and two away here for the Tigers in the bottom half of the fourth inning. A two-out batter, A.J. Motto. Motto 0 for 1, strikeout swinging in the second inning. Motto trying to keep the inning alive and bring Nate Easterling, the number nine hitter who's in the on deck circle, to the plate as Motto takes a pitch for a strike, nothing to one to count. Again, Winfield number one in the state in West Virginia in Class AA. The Metro News Power Rankings as Motto swings and misses nothing into the count. The Generals are 15-0 and 0 this season. They've won 20 straight games and 31 of their last 32 games. As the pitch outside for ball, one to the count. Last loss for Winfield again was a 2-1 loss to Logan in game one of the Class AA Region 4 Championship Series on May 22nd as the 1-2 pitch is outside, 2-2 two two the count. Chapmanville, 
They've had a tough go this season. They're 4-10. and 10. Don't let that record fool you. Chapmanville's been in the majority of these ball games as Motto swings and misses, and he'll go down swinging to end the bottom of the fourth inning. Tigers get a leadoff walk, but leave him stranded. We'll head to the top of the fifth inning. Winfield 4, Chapmanville 2. You're listening to and watch, you're li- you're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers baseball on, du- on video productions and WVOW Logan West Virginia's premier sports station. Now, welcome back to Ted Ellsfield, Tampa, West Virginia. We moved to the top of the fifth inning, 4-2, Winfield leading, and the Generals will send the three, four, five hitters to the plate. Blake Withrow, Xavier Hensley, and Jared Miller against Levi Casey. He's on in relief for the Chapmanville Tigers on in relief of, of Ian Plumley, who went four innings. I'll get you the rest of his stat line here momentarily as the batter with throw steps into the box as Talon Thompson out talking to Casey to get finish going over last minute instructions as the stat line for Plumley four innings, four runs, five hits, one strikeout, three walks, and three earned runs. As the first pitch is in the dirt to Withrow, 1-0 and the count to Blake Withrow, 0 for 1. A ground out to first, back in the third one. Might as well call it a line shot to first, back in the third inning. And a walk and a run scored back in the first. Now the count 2-0. Casey is on in relief, but Ian Plumley will remain in the game as the designated hitter. It's a new rule. A, a relatively new rule, about three or four years old, that the rule allowed the uh, allowed teams to keep their pitcher in the game as a designated hitter to try to speed it up and, and keep from freezing, you know, keep from extending the game any further when trying to uh, determine the DH positioning when they come in and out of the game. So. 2-0 is taken for strike, and the 2-1 is fouled off. So 2-2 the count to Withrow, and the pitch on the way, <coughs> excuse me, on the way, taken for, or swung on a miss, excuse me, one away here in the top of the fifth in, top of the fifth inning. Xavier Hensley, the batter, as you see the strikeout on the little general replay here in the top of the fifth, one away. And Hensley swings and misses on the first pitch. Nothing and one to count. Hensley 0 for 1. He flew out to center back in the first and walked in the third. Pitch on the way. Swung on and softly lined at the shortstop topping 
who's there to make the catch for out number two. And now the batter for the Generals is Jared Miller. As once again, the you see the replay of the soft line out, or Thornhill Auto Group replay. First pitch to Miller taken for a strike. Nothing and one to count. Miller one for two. He struck out back in the third in his last plate appearance. And he has an RBI double and a run scored in the first. That pitch swung on and fouled up the third baseline. Nothing and two the count. As the Generals lead the Tigers four to two. In the top of the fifth inning, no two pitch on the way. Outside corner just misses one and two the count. And that one very, very close to being strike three. It's one, two, two outs pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. Casey gets the strikeout. He strikes out two in the inning and retires the Generals in order in the top half of the fifth inning. We'll move to the bottom of the fifth. Winfield four, Chapmanville two. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers baseball on video productions and WVOW, Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Move to the bottom of the fifth inning, 4-2, Winfield leading the Chapmanville Tigers and due up for the Tigers against Carson Fry in the bottom of the fifth. Nate Easterling, Andrew Topping, Gunnar Lucas, 9-1-2 in the lineup as quickly Topping, or excuse me, Easterling, the second baseman in an 0-2 hole. Easterling is 0-1 this evening. He struck out in his only plate appearance back in the second inning. 0-2 pitch on the way outside. 1-2, now the count to Nate Easterling as Carson Fry working on his 84th pitch of the evening. Now that's pitch number 85 and cut on a miss by Easterling. That is strikeout number nine, out number one for the Tigers in the bottom of the fifth. That'll bring up Andrew Topping to the plate. Topping 0 for 1. Grounded out to second base in his last plate appearance in the third inning. In his first plate appearance, he walked and scored back in the Tiger two-run first inning. Pitch on the way is outside for a ball. 1-0 the count. Chapmanville with two hits in the contest, both of those coming in the first inning. Tigers have not had a hit since a two-out single off the bat of Joey Canterbury as the 1-0 swung on a miss by topping, 1-1 one one the count. Now to the right-hand hitting shortstop. <coughs> 1-1 pitch coming from Fry, pitch number 88. 
outside, two and one now to count. Two topping. As Fry working in this fifth inning, four and a third innings pitch, as that pitch is taking outside four strike, two and two now the count. And this will be pitch number 90 on the way for Carson Fry. He'll have 20 more after this as that pitch. Same location taken for called strike three. Topping doesn't believe it, but that strikeout number 10 for Andrew Topping. And you see it here on our replay, kind of a tough take. But, again, the movement that Fry has on that fastball is – generating a lot of strike calls on that outside corner as the batter Gunner Lucas takes a pitch for a strike, nothing and one to count to Lucas. He is one for one, double and a run scored back in the first and in his last plate appearance in the third, drew a base on balls as he's in an 0-2 hole as he takes a pitch at the letters, nothing and two to count. Ten strikeouts for Fry. He's looking for number 11 to pitch on the way, and he'll get it as Lucas goes down swinging as Fry strikes out the side in the bottom of the fifth inning as Chapmanville does nothing with the bats. As we've completed five innings from Ted Ellis Field in Chapmanville, West Virginia, 4-2 Winfield leading the Chapmanville Tigers. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers baseball on video productions and WVOW. Logan. West Virginia's premier sports station. Welcome back to Ted Ellsfield, Chapmanville, West Virginia. As we move to the top of the sixth inning, Winfield 4, Chapmanville 2. Chapmanville Tigers baseball on video productions and WVOW. Bill Lusk with you, Seth Eastep, our WVOW engineer, back in the WVOW studios in Logan, West Virginia. Our on-site engineer for video production is Robbie Mounts and our cameraman atop the press box here at Ted Ellsfield, Benji Cox has... The first batter for the Generals is the center fielder, Brody Cox. He's hitting for the DH, Jake Campbell, and he lays down a perfect bunt and will reach with an infield single as you see the replay here as Cox is able to get a good one down. And when you got a left-handed pitcher on the mound, that's a tough play for him to make off the mound after delivering the pitch, as you see on our little General Stores replay as the pitch on the way to Downing, the catcher, is taking first strike on the outside corner. Nothing to one to count. Downing one for two. He doubled into the fourth inning and grounded out back in the first. Pitch on the way. The runner breaks for second. The throw down is high. 
and not in time as sliding in with the stolen base is Brody Cox as that pitch was upstairs for a for a ball. One and one to count as Thompson did a good job to come down with that ball and deliver a strike. And actually the ball was just a, a little outside as 1-1 one, one the count. Line score through five innings after that single, infield single, Winfield four runs, six hits, no errors. They've left four runners stranded. Chapmanville, two runs, two hits, two errors, three runners left on base for the Tigers as we're in the top of the sixth and 1-1 one, one pitch in the dirt. Blocked by Thompson, 2-1 the counts, holding that second is Cox. So Brayson Downing, the batter, has the sign from the third base coach. Now back in the box, Casey back on the mound, swung on, and the ball hit the short. May have to play at third. Nope, not in time at third over there as... The shortstop will take the easy out across the diamond and retire. Downing 6-3 on the putout as Topping throws to Farley. But moving the runner up to third was Downing as Cox is now 90 feet away. So good piece of hitting there by Downing doing his job to get the runner over. I thought at first when the ball was hit, I thought they may have had a play at third on Cox, but Cox was going on the pitch and topping instead of trying to get Cox at third when he had got the out at first. And now Chapmanville with the Chapmanville with the infield in as a bunt laid down, a little bit of safety squeeze on a 1-0 pitch by Taylor and Chapmanville plays it to perfection as Thompson picks it up, looks the runner back at third and then fires a strike to the second baseman covering the bag as that was Easterling covering the bag. So 2-4 on the put out as you see it on our little general, re little general stores replay here. So two out and the number nine batter, Ian Cox. Stepping into the plate for the generals, takes a pitch at the knees for a called strike, nothing and one to count. So Kazee, one pitch away from stranding a runner at third. That pitch swung on, hit into the outfield. The left fielder on the run will make the catch as Gunnar Lucas makes a nice running catch out there in the gap in left center field to retire the Generals in the top of the sixth inning. Winfield gets a bunt single off the bat of Brody Cox, but he's left stranded at third base. Five and a half innings in the books from Chapmanville, West Virginia. Your score remains Winfield four, Chapmanville two. You're listening. You're you're listening to and watching Chapmanville Tigers baseball on Video Productions and WVOW Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station.
Bottom of the sixth inning, 4-2. Winfield leading the Chapmanville Tigers, and the Tigers will send the three, four, five hitters to the plate. Talon Thompson, Andrew Farley, and Joey Canterbury. Thompson, right-hand hitting catcher, takes a pitch upstairs for a ball from Carson Fry. 1-0 the count. Fry's 95th pitch on the way is inside. 2-0 now the count to Thompson as we'll see how Chapmanville will elect to handle these at-bats with the heart of the order up. And also with Fry approaching that 110 pitch limit as it's inside 3-0 the count. Got to imagine that Thompson will be taking a strike here with the count at 3-0 as Winfield will likely have to make a pitching change here in the Seventh inning at least, but now a four-pitch walk to Thompson. So 97 pitches. Chapmanville would like nothing more than to possibly get Fry out of this contest. And after that pitch, after that four-pitch walk, we'll see if Andrew Farley is taking till he gets a strike or if maybe Coach Josh Rakes will turn him loose if the first pitch looks good to Farley. Tying run at the plate. Again, Farley does have pop in the back. Pitch on the way. Upstairs for a ball, and that is five straight balls delivered by Carson Fry. He's at pitch number 98. Twelve more pitches left for Fry as pitch number 99 is on its way. And it's upstairs for a ball and off the mitt and moving into second base is Talon Thompson, and that may draw a mound visit. That's six straight balls now thrown by Carson Fry. It's moving up on the pass ball is Talon Thompson. And the Winfield coach, Will Isaacs, will emerge from the dugout to have a word with Fry, who has fallen behind 2-0 too farly he walked Thompson on four straight pitches. The four to the score here in the bottom half of the sixth inning from Ted Ellis Field as Isaacs concludes the mound visit and now downing the catcher and the pitcher Fry sharing some last minute instruction with one another and We'll be set for baseball here as Downing returns to the returns to the plate. The home plate umpire will brush off the plate before Downing gets in his catching catcher's crouch. And now we're set for baseball as home plate umpire readies the ball for play and the 2-0 pitch on the way. And it's in the dirt. 3-0 the count to Farley. If Farley was to reach, got to imagine Coach Will Isaacs will make a pitching change as that is pitch number 100 from Fry. It does not have a name with it. So 3 0 to Farley. Thompson, the runner, at second. 3 0 pitch on the way is outside, and Chapmanville has the first two aboard as that is walk. Numbers four and five, and on eight straight, as we may get a pitch runner at first base for Farley, and it will be number 25. That is Peyton Dingus, the pitch runner, out at first base for Farley after the four pitch walk. And it looks like, looks like Winfield will stay with Carson Fry as the go ahead go ahead run at the plate for the Tigers in the form of Joey Canterbury. Canterbury has one home run on the season coming a couple of weeks ago out in Tennessee. During the Tigers' three-game spring break trip, he shows bunt, pulls back, 
and takes it. Well, actually, it shows Bunt's unable to get it down, so that'll be a strike. Thought maybe he pulled it back at first, but Canterbury fails to make contact, so 0 1 the count. Two Canterbury with runners at first and second. Generals playing up for the bunt. First baseman charging in on the grass. Canterbury will offer, and that's going to be a strike. Not for sure if it was a called strike or if Canterbury went too far on the bunt attempt. Nevertheless, nothing into the count. Two Canterbury, 103 pitches, 104 on its way. Here it comes. And strike three swinging, strikeout number 12 for Carson Fry. And the batter is Corey Johnson. Corey Johnson's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts, first and the fourth inning. 12 strikeouts for Fry. And pitch number 104 on the way. Swung on a miss by Johnson. Nothing and one. The count to Corey Johnson and what is more than likely the last inning of work for Carson Fry. Pitch swung on a miss on the pitch up and out of the zone upstairs. 0-2 now the count to Johnson. 0-2 pitch on the way. Thompson breaks for third. It's a strikeout and the throw not in time as Thompson slides in ahead of the tag, moving up to second on the throw. So credit Peyton Dingus with the steal a second. So a double steal and the designated hitter, Ian Plumley, will step in to bat for Chapmanville after the 13th strikeout by Carson Fry. Corey Johnson goes down for the third time on strikes this evening. And Plumley, 0 for 2. He flew out to right in the second and struck out in the fourth. And that pitch taken outside for a ball, 1-0 the count. Plumley looking to deliver a two-out single that could potentially tie this game as pitches outside. One and one, now the count. That was pitch number 109, so this will be the last batter that Carson Fry will face as Plumley asked for and is granted time by the home plate umpire. Talon Thompson, the runner at third. Peyton Dingus, the runner at second. That is the tying run. At second base, as Fry misses on a pitch outside, two and one, now the count. Or actually, excuse me, 3 0, now the count. To Ian Plumley. As pitch number 111 on the way, gets to the backstop. Here comes Thompson, breaking from third. He will score, sliding in the home plate. And the Tigers have cut it to a one run game. It's four to three. As moving up to third on the wild pitch is Peyton, Peyton Dingus. As we'll get a pitching change for the Winfield Generals here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And it will be Jared Miller, the right fielder, coming in to pitch. Miller came in to pitch in the season opener against the uh, Chapmanville season opener, I should say. It wasn't a season opener for Winfield, but when these two teams met back on March 18th, it was a 3-2 Winfield win as Chapmanville fell behind 2-0 in that contest after Winfield scored a run in the first and the second inning. The Tigers eventually tied it at two, and Blake Winthrow with throw, singled with one out in the bottom of the sixth inning to score Carson Fry to give Winfield a 3-2 win as the Generals defeated the Tigers back on March 18th. Braylon Moore started that game for Chapmanville, allowing two runs on one hit and striking out five in five innings. 
Cameron Wallace was the starting pitcher for the Winfield Generals, allowing two runs on four hits, striking out two in three innings. Jace Miller came on in relief and allowed two hits in four innings, striking out seven to get the win for the Generals in that game on March 18th. So Miller is on to try to close it out here, trying to earn a four-out save. Will Miller as well, let's see who moved to right field here in just a second. As Chapmanville with runners at first and third. As Talon Thompson scored on the wild pitch to bring Chapmanville within a run. 4-3 the score here. As Miller finishing his warm-up pitches. As five and two-thirds is Carson Fry's final stat line. As of right now, he's allowed three runs. Two of those have earned. He is responsible for the runners on first and third. Miller struck out 13 batters. He walked six and allowed just two hits. And thus far, three runs, two of those are earned and AJ Motto is the batter. Motto looking to even the score at four as the Tigers have been battling back since the first inning when the general scored those Three runs in the top of the first. Tappenville plated two in the bottom. And first pitch to Motto. Swung on a miss, nothing to one to count. A.J. Motto is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts here this, this evening. So the 0-1 on the way. Pitch swung on a miss, nothing and two the count to Motto. As... Miller looking to get out of a jam here and preserve a 4-3 lead, and he'll do just that as he gets Motto to go down swinging for his first strikeout, and that will end the bottom of the sixth inning for the Chapmanville Tigers. But they play one run on no hits and leave two runners stranded. Six innings in the books from Ted Ellis Field in Chapmanville, West Virginia. Your score, Winfield 4, Chapmanville 3. You're watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers Baseball on Video Productions and WVOW Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station.
Top of the seventh inning from Ted Ellis Field in Chapel West Virginia. The Tigers trail the Generals four to three, and Winfield will send the top of the lineup to bat here in the top of the seventh against Levi Casey and the ever dangerous Carson Fry, the batter, swings and misses at the first pitch, nothing and one the count. If you're just joining us, Fry is one for three. He reached on an error back in the fourth inning, flew out to right in the second, and on the third pitch of the game, deposited a ball over the right field fence for a solo home run to put the Generals up one nothing early on as the 0-2, or actually the 1-2 is low. One, two and two, the count evens up to Fry. 2-2 two, two pitch on the way, taken for a ball, 3-2 the count. As Winfield, three runs in the first and a run in the fourth. Chapmanville, two runs in the first, a run in the sixth. That's where we stand, 4-3 as, as Casey gets the strikeout of Fry. One away here in the top of the seventh. That for Casey, strikeout number three. What a job that Casey has done in relief of Plumley as he's on to pitch as that pitch is low in the dirt, 1-0 the count. Casey working his third inning of relief has given up one hit, struck out three and walked none as that pitch on the outside corner, one and one, the count evens up to Preston Kiefer, the left fielder. For the Generals, Kiefer one for three. He doubled in the first, grounded out the third. In the second, grounded out the short, back in the fourth. Now heading to the count, two balls, one strike. Pitch on the way, swung on a foul, out of play. Count evens at two balls, two strikes. Two, two, one out. Pitch on the way is outside. And three, two, the count runs full. Four, three, top of the seventh inning if you're just joining us. As the three, two is outside for a ball. And that will be a one out walk to Kiefer and Blake Withrow, the batter. Withrow, 0 for 2. He struck out in the fifth, lined to first base back in the third, and walked and scored in the first inning as that pitch is out outside for a called strike. Nothing and one to count as Casey does a good job of painting the outside corner. Thompson will set back up there, and the pitch will come back over the inner half of the plate, but Withrow swings through it, nothing and two. Now the count. I'm seeing 17, but I could have eight of them that. As Casey looking for his fourth strikeout, and it swung on and fouled off the netting. That home plate, nothing and two. The count remains. Winfield leading 4-3, looking for an insurance run here in the top of the seventh. They have a runner at first base, that being Preston Keeper, who draws a pickoff attempt from Casey and driving back in, diving back in safely. Ahead of Andrew Farley's tag is Keeper. Farley re-enters the game after he was lifted for a pitch runner. And now the runner moves on the 0-2 pitch as it's popped up into foul territory. The third baseman will make the catch as Corey Johnson will record the out in foul territory. Getting back to first base safely is Kiefer. So two away and Xavier Hensley, the batter, for the Winfield Generals. Hensley is 0 for 2. Flew out to center back in the first. He walked in the third and lined out to short. 
softly back in the fifth as the first pitch from Casey is taken for a ball low, 1-0 the count. Casey with the sign, the pitch, swung on, hit off the end of the bat in the second baseman. Easterling Fields throws to Farley to retire the Generals in the top of the seventh inning. They get a one-out walk but leave a runner stranded. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh. The Tampville Tigers trail the number one ranked Winfield Generals by one. 4-3, the Generals leading. The Tigers need one to tie, two to win. Find out if they can do it next on Video Productions and WBOW, Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Bottom of the seventh inning, final call for the Chapmanville Tigers who trail the Winfield Generals 4-3 to three and do up for the Tigers in the bottom of the seventh against Jared Miller, Nate Easterling, Andrew Topping, Gunnar Lucas, 9-1-2 in the lineup as a first pitch fouled off the screen at home plate. Nothing to one to count to Easterling. He's 0 for 2, pair of strikeouts on the evening pitch outside and low count evens up at 1-1 pitch on the way swung on a miss one and two the count as the three runs that Chapmanville has scored in this contest as pitch on the way swung on a miss by Easterling and that is out number one strikeout Number two for Miller in relief. And the batter, Andrew Topping for Chapmanville. Topping is 0 for 2. He struck out in the fifth, grounded out in the third, walked and scored back in the first inning. And as I was saying, the three runs scored by Chapmanville is only the third time that this Winfield team has allowed three or more runs. Chapmanville... Only the third team to play three runs or more in a contest against Winfield as 1-0 pitch on the way from topping is in the dirt. 2-0 the count to Andrew Topping as those teams, as that pitch taken inside for a strike, 2-1 the count, much to the displeasure of the Chapmanville fans. As you may hear them over top of our radio broadcast as that pitch swung on a miss, count even up at two and two as Winfield, again, they're 15 and 0 on the season. They beat Ripley 12-7 and Buffalo 17 to six as Miller gets topping to swing at a pitch in the dirt and that is Strikeout number three, out number two, and the last hope for the Tigers, Gunnar Lucas, the left fielder. He is one for, one for two. 
Struck out in the fifth, he walked in the third and doubled and scored back in the first. Last hope for Chapinville. He's hoping to keep it alive here for Talon Thompson, who's in the on-deck circle. First pitch swung on a miss. Nothing and one the count. So, again, Ripley, Buffalo, and now Chapinville. The only three teams to score three runs or more against this Winfield team as that 0-1 pitch is fouled off the lights down the right field line. Nothing and two the count to Gunnar Lucas. So now the Tigers down to their last strike. As Miller looking for the four out save. 0-2 pitch on the way, swung on and fouled. Count remains nothing and two as Lucas fights off a fastball and remains alive in the count. Chapmanville looking to get Talon Thompson to the plate. He's in the on-deck circle. 0-2 pitch on the way. Swung on and fouled out of play again. Count remains nothing and two. As Lucas fights off a second straight pitch. 0-2 on the way. And it's swung on and bounced foul up the third base side. And we'll do it again. It's Gunner Lucas fighting off three straight, two strike pitches. Staying alive in the count. And for the time being, keeping hope alive for the Tigers. 0-2 pitch on the way. Swung on and a base hit in the left field. That will bring Talon Thompson to the plate as Lucas gets his second hit of the contest. And for Chapmanville, that's their first hit since the first inning. A Joey Canterbury two-out RBI single. Since then, the Tigers have been hitless through five and two-third innings until that Lucas single and now Talon Thompson, the batter, with the opportunity to keep this game alive for the Tigers. If Thompson can split a gap, Lucas should be able to score. As that pitch is in a dirt, good block by the catcher Downing to prevent Lucas from moving up into scoring position. So 1-0 the count. Andrew Farley in the on-deck circle for the Tigers. 102 outs, pitch on the way, swung on and fouled. Pitch inside as Thompson fought the pitch off and fouled it out of play. One and one, the count to Talon Thompson. Talon is 0 for 1. He walked and scored in the sixth, flew out to center and had a sack fly to center back in the first inning. Pitch on the way, swung on and fouled out of play again. And the count runs to one ball, two strikes. So, again, Chapmanville down to its final strike. We'll see if Thompson is able to work some two-out, two-strike magic like Gunnar Lucas did to keep this inning alive. As now we have time called by the generals as Coach Isaacs will emerge from the dugout and talk to Miller how they want to handle this two-strike pitch as Chapmanville down one, tying run on first base in the form of Gunnar Lucas, winning run at the plate in the form of Talon Thompson as a brief meeting has concluded on the mound. And we'll resume play here shortly as the home plate umpire Receives three new baseballs from the Chapmanville dugout. And now the umpire puts his mask on, readies the ball for play. Miller with the one-two pitch to Thompson on its way upstairs for a ball. Two and two the count. As two outs. Anything in the gap should score Lucas. 2-2, two, two, two outs. Batter number two at the plate, and he gets hit by the pitch, and Lucas will move up into scoring position. Thompson, the winning run, is aboard at first base. Andrew Farley, 0 for 2 on the evening. Strikeouts in the first and the third inning, and he walked on four pitches back in the sixth inning. Steps to the plate, the ever-dangerous Andrew Farley. If you remember, at one point last season, six home runs in five games with a chance 
to tie or potentially win it for the Tigers as the first pitch is upstairs for a ball. 1-0 the count. To Farley. Runners at first and second. The pitch outside for a ball. 2-0 now the count to Farley as Winfield clinging to a one-run lead. 2-0 pitch on the way. Up inside and upstairs, 3-0 now the count. Got to imagine Farley's taking on this pitch. As again, Chapmanville trailing by a run. What a job that Levi Casey has done in relief for the Tigers to, to keep them in this contest, to give them a chance. The 3-0 on the way is inside ball four. The bases are loaded. The tying run, 90 feet away at third base. A pass ball could score the tying run. As Joey Canterbury, the batter. Canterbury is 1-4-2. RBI single back in the first, a walk in the fourth, and a strikeout back in the sixth inning. Karen Canterbury with a chance to play hero. The pitch on the way. Taken low in the dirt. 1-0 and the count. As that is now, if I'm correct, that is six straight balls. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Line foul. Down the first base side. 1-1 one and one the count. As that ball was off the end of the bat. Fortunate, fortunate for Chapmanville that I was too far away for the first baseman with throw to get to. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Swung on a miss by Canterbury. 1-2 and two the count. And the Tigers again down to their final strike as Canterbury steps out of the box, gathers his thoughts, steps back in, awaits the 1-2 from Miller. Two outs. Pitch on the way. Swung on. Hit in the center field. But right at the center fielder, Brody Cox, who is there for the putout, and the Winfield Generals remain undefeated on the season, improving to 16 and 0 on the year. But they had a hard-fought earned, hard-fought win tonight, four to three over Chapmanville. Well, we'll step aside for a two-minute break, and we'll come back. We will recap the Generals 4-3 win and set the stage for our next broadcast on Video Productions and WVOW after this. Once again, your final score, Winfield 4, Chapmanville 3. You've been listening, you've been watching and listening to Chapmanville Tigers baseball on WVOW, Logan, West Virginia, Premier Sports Station and Video Productions.
Welcome back to Ted Ellis Field, your final tonight. Winfield 4, Chapmanville 3. And the Tigers they put up a fight in the seventh inning, load the bases, had the winning run out at second base, the tying run out at third base. And Joey Canterbury lines out to end the contest for the Chapmanville Tigers as Winfield survives another scare and gets away with the win, their 21st consecutive win, and their 16th this season in generals. 16-0 on the year. Again, they have not lost since losing to Logan back on May 22nd. 2-1, to one, the Wildcats beat the generals in game one of the Region 4 championship series last season at Roger E. Gertz Field. After that loss, Winfield went on to win five consecutive games, winning the next two games in the regional series to advance to the state tournament. They won a tune-up game with Wahama before going on to Gomart Park, defeating Lewis County in the Class AA semifinals and defeating Kaiser to win the Class AA state championship. Again, the Generals 16-0 and on the season. Chapmanville with another close loss. The Tigers dropped to 4 and 11 on the year as Winfield. Winfield's made a way of winning these close ball games. They defeated Chapmanville 3 to 2 back on the 18th of March. They beat Logan 2 nothing on the 25th. They've also defeated Charleston Catholic, who at the time was number 1 in uh, class single way, 3-0 to score on that one, April the 8th. That was actually last game played last Monday. And then last Tuesday, defeat Nitro 3-2. to Again, Chapmanville just the third team to score three or more runs against Winfield this season. The first to do it was Ripley. That was a 12-7 win for the Generals over the Vikings. And the the last to do it, Buffalo, a 17-6 win over Buffalo back on March 28th. So the Generals who came into this contest having given up just three runs in their last six games, give up three tonight to the Chapmanville Tigers. So 4-3 the final. The stat line looks like this. Winfield, four runs, six hits, no errors. They left six runners on base. For Chapmanville, three runs, three hits, two errors, eight runners left on base. For the Chapmanville Tigers, they had their chances. Just couldn't get the runners in. Couldn't get that timely hit when they needed to. Again, Chapmanville got two hits in the first inning. Didn't get a hit until... One out in the top of the seventh inning when Gunnar Lucas fought off three straight 0-2 pitches, and on the fourth straight, he singled to keep the inning alive for the Tigers. They eventually load the bases, but the game ends on the fly out off the bat of Joey Canterbury to end the game. 4-3 the final winning pitcher tonight. Carson Fry for the Generals, losing, losing pitcher Ian Plumley for the Tigers. Uh, what a job that Levi Casey did in relief. Three innings for of relief. Casey allows just one hit, strikes out three, and walks just one in relief to keep Chapmanville in this contest. Jared Miller comes on, gets the four-out save for the Generals. Fry had a solo home run back in the first inning, and that is the final 4-3 from Ted Ellis Field. Winfield will travel out Wayne tomorrow evening to face the Pioneers, a team they've already beaten 17-1 uh, this season. Chapmanville will head to Scott tomorrow to battle the eighth-ranked Skyhawks, who were in action tonight at Logan. Apologize for not keeping you up to date on that one, but the last report that we had was 2-1 to one in the Bottom of the second inning, and right now, game in the bottom of the seventh, 2-2, Scott at Logan. 
Typical Scott Logan regular season matchup from Roger E. Gertz Field as they're locked in a 2-2 tie in the bottom of the seventh inning. Logan trying to win it. Uh, next broadcast of Tampville Tigers baseball here on Video Productions will be Thursday evening. As I check with Robbie Mounts, it'll be Thursday evening as the Tigers take on the Sissonville Indians, a team that Chapmanville had faced earlier in the season and lost. That was part of that 0-5 stretch to start the season. As for our next radio broadcast on WBOW, well, we're going to try it again. Four previous times we have tried to get the ladies on the air. Four times we've been rained out. But I feel pretty confident that we'll be able to get them on tomorrow evening as the weather forecast looks good, looks to be another hot day, and we'll look to be ready for some intense action between two of the top three class double-A teams in the state, second-ranked Chapmanville, traveling down 119 to take on the third-ranked Logan Wildcats, the first of, I don't know what could be, Five matchups this season. They'll meet twice in the regular season. And who knows? They could possibly meet three times in the sectional championship. So it could be the first of five meetings this season between two very good ball clubs. Number two, Chapmanville. Number three, Logan. On the air tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Pre-game starting at 520 and first pitch scheduled for 530 from B or Field. At Logan, West Virginia, on Middleburg Island. And that concludes our broadcast tonight from Ted Ellis Field. Once again, final score Winfield 4, Chapmanville 3. For our studio engineer back in the WVOW studio, Seth Estep, our video productions on site engineer, Robbie Mounts, and our cameraman atop the press box here at Ted Ellis Field, Benji Cox. I'm Bill Lusk saying we hope you enjoyed this broadcast of Chapmanville Tigers Baseball and Video Productions and WBOW Logan, West Virginia's premier sports station. Good night, everybody.